October 1st marks China's National Day, but this year is especially significant because it also marks the 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. To celebrate, an exhibition of the achievements to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the founding of the PRC is being held here in the Beijing Exhibition Centre. President Xi visited the exhibition on the 23rd of September and the next day it opened to the public. Today about 16,000 people will descend on the Beijing Exhibition Centre to learn a little bit more about China's colourful history. The exhibition will focus on all of China's achievements over the last 70 years, everything from its economy and the daily lives of its citizens to its growing international status and influence. I've come down to see if I can find some of the key moments that show China's development over the last seven decades. The first thing that you're presented with as you come through the huge doors of the exhibition center is this enormous oil painting that's just behind me which shows Mao's address of the nation on the 1st of October 1949. It's very symbolic, very grand and uh, one of the main focal points of the exhibition and it gives you kind of an idea of what the rest of the exhibition is going to be like. The exhibition runs through 150 of China's firsts and this one's kind of interesting because it's actually the first law that ever went into place after the founding of the PRC. This is China's first marriage law which kind of talks about there being one man and one woman in a marriage and also indicates equal rights between both parties in the marriage. And just behind me is the setup of what a um, traditional marriage ceremony would have looked like in the 1950s. The carving behind me depicts the Chengyu Tielu, or the railroad from Chengdu to Chongqing, which was the first ever railroad built after the founding of the PRC in 1952. The carving itself is really grand and very, very impressive, and kind of shows just how proud China is of its rail history over the last 70 years. This exhibition is filled with real life kind of examples of products. Behind me is this enormous car which is called the Jiefang or Liberty or Liberation, something similar to that. It was China's first ever domestically produced and sold car and it was first produced in 1956 and as of 2018 over 7 million of these models were sold. So we've just seen China's first ever domestically produced truck but behind me is China's first ever high-end car and I'm sure you'll agree it is a beauty, the Hongqi. Now, during the last military parade, President Xi rode along in uh, Hongqi, and I'm pretty sure this 70th year anniversary will be exactly the same. 1962 saw the first ever 100 Flowers Awards, which was the first film festival where the winners were picked by the public. As you can see from some of the depictions of films that won, they're very different from the Hollywood blockbusters of the time, but they do kind of show what would have been popular in China, the cultural classics and the revolutionary depictions, which although very different from the Western style, are what would have been popular in China and still have an influence on Chinese film today. The studious classroom behind me depicts 1977 and the reintroduction of the university entrance exam, otherwise known as the Gaokai. Now, today's Gaokai looks a little different than this, with millions and millions of students studying for the Gaokai every single year. When dealing with such a large number of students, it is kind of the only fair way to make sure everyone has an opportunity to go to any university they want to. 1983 and the first ever nationwide broadcast of the Spring Festival Gala. Now today the Spring Festival Gala is this huge thing in China. Every Spring Festival people that work away from home will travel back to their hometowns and on the eve of the Spring Festival everyone will gather around and watch the Spring Festival Gala. I guess the nearest thing we have in the UK is the Queen's Speech where everyone kind of watches it and knows what's going on. But this is much more of a big event and I would say pretty much every single Chinese person will watch this at least pretty much every year. So we're coming into the 1990s in China's history and this image behind me caught my eye. Now I love comparison images like this because it just shows how quickly China's developed and especially when it comes to cityscapes. The image behind me shows the skyline of Shanghai in the year 1990 compared with just 28 years later in 2018 and I'm sure you'll agree with me that it's pretty astounding. It's gone from kind of what looks like just a very small fishing dock to this 
hugely futuristic landscape with these towering buildings coming up and of course you can see the, the huge towers of the Putong district. Very, very impressive and unlike anything I've ever seen in any other place in, in the entire world. Fast forward to 2008 and the first time that China ever held the Summer Olympic Games. And also the first time that China ever won the most gold medals, which is kind of nice that it happened on home soil. It's a memory which is still quite recent in most of our minds and it's definitely the first time that I saw China on such this huge scale celebration and the bird's nest which is still open today to go and visit. It's actually pretty cool because the Winter Olympics are also going to be held for the first time in China in 2022 so I've got all of this to look forward to in a few years. One thing that's been advancing at an incredible rate in China is its technology. You can see from these futuristic robots, which are kind of an amalgamation of China's technology. They use things like 5G, spatial technology, um, voice, voice recognition and uh, facial recognition to perceive the world around them. And I think they look pretty funky. You'll find them in places like banks, offices, at People's Daily we've got one. And yeah, they're becoming not this weird futuristic thing they're actually becoming a part of our day-to-day -day life and so that's the end yeah it was a very impressive uh, exhibition and I certainly learned a lot I think it's quite a feat to have put everything in a chronological order and show all the achievements that China's made over such an extended period of time over the last 70 years it's been done in such a way that even me with my terrible Chinese reading skills can understand and learn something new